Hi, I'm Pastor Dave, teaching evangelist with Lamb and Lion Ministries. On the Christ and Prophecy TV show, we are soon starting a series in Daniel. To supplement this upcoming series, I want to highlight some key nuggets so that you can get the most out of this amazing prophetic book. You know, critics of Scripture, they say this book is a forgery, and it was written during the Maccabean period, which is the 400 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament. So, why do they so incorrectly assert this? Because the content of Daniel is so accurate, but also so far ahead of his time that those who do not have a high view of inspiration and the inerrancy of Scripture believe God could not have given Daniel these words to write. Now, twice, twice Daniel does claim to be the author. We see this in Daniel 7 and Daniel 12. Now, he does write in third person until chapter 7, but however, from chapter 7 to 12, he does write in first person saying he's the author. Ezekiel 14 speaks of Daniel's obedience, and Ezekiel 28 speaks of Daniel's character. But the real confirmation that Daniel did actually write this book is found in the very words of Jesus, who in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 confirm Daniel as the author. A key to understanding prophetic books like Daniel, Ezekiel, Zechariah, Revelation is understanding prophecy will have visions, symbols, and most importantly, some type of divine interpretation. Now, in Daniel's case, we see several times an angel explaining the vision which Daniel is seeing. Now, this is important because in chapters 2, 7, 8, 10, 11, and 12, God reveals truth that we would not have known if it wasn't for Daniel. These truths would have gone unrecorded. So one must understand, a prophet sees the vision, he records them exactly as he sees them, and oftentimes he does not understand what he's seeing himself. This is why he needs an interpreter, often an angel, and the angel provides the explanation of the meaning of the vision he's seeing. The structure of Daniel is not found in chronological order, but it's developed around a theme. The same can be said for the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah's theme explains the reason for the divine punishment of Judah being sent to Babylon. Daniel records from the perspective of those in captivity. The overall theme of Daniel is the time of the Gentiles. Now, besides for the prophetic aspect of Daniel, this work also details how Jews can live in a Gentile world and be faithful to the law of Moses. Also, this book teaches Gentile nations the nature of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Critics like to accuse Scripture of having contradictions. A common one is found in the Gospels. In Luke 18, it says Jesus was approaching Jericho and a blind man was sitting by the road begging. Whereas in Mark 10, it says they came to Jericho as, as he was leaving Jericho and there's a blind man sitting by the road. So was Jesus going to Jericho or coming from Jericho? Why is this such a contradiction? Well, there must be errors in Scripture. No, 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 no. There's no errors in Scripture. In this case, one has to understand geography. See, the Jericho of the New Testament was built by Herod. He built this Jericho three miles away from the Jericho of the Old Testament. So one would have to go through the Old Testament Jericho to get to the New Testament Jericho, which means Jesus did both. He went out of Old Testament Jericho and he approached Herod's New Testament Jericho. Now, I bring this up because we find one of those proposed contradictions in the very first chapter and first verse of the book of Daniel. It reads, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. However, in Jeremiah 25, it says that the word came to, Jer to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of the king's reign. So did this event happen in the third year or the fourth year of the king's reign? Again, to understand this, one needs to have an understanding of the two cultures. In Babylon time, time is counted exactly. A day is exactly 24 hours. However, in Israel, a part of a day could be considered a day. This contradiction in Daniel goes away when one understands Daniel wrote his book in Babylon using Babylon time, which only counts a full year whereas Jeremiah wrote his book in Judah using Israel time, which counts partial time. You know, another nugget 
I'll share this week is explaining the theme of Daniel, which is the time of the Gentiles. This time frame begins in 586, when King Nebuchadnezzar conquered Jerusalem, and it continues even to today. Luke 21 says that they will fall by the edge of the sword and they'll be led captive into all the nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentile are fulfilled. The times of the Gentile is a period of Gentile domination over Jerusalem and the Jewish people. From the dethronement of Israel's last king, King Zedekiah, until the enthronement of Israel's messianic king in the millennial. Gentile empires will rise and fall and have some control over Israel, both the nation and the land. Now, yes, there was some temporary Jewish control over Jerusalem in the Maccabean period, and also during the first and second Jewish revolt against Rome. That would have been 66 to 70 AD and 132 to 135 AD. You know, the time of the Gentiles will end when Gentiles can no longer tread down the city of Jerusalem. So says Daniel 2, Daniel 7, Revelation 13, and Revelation 17. Lastly for this week, let's look at some of the timing of the book of Daniel. Three times the Babylon king, Nebuchadnezzar, seizes Jerusalem, and he takes Jewish exiles back to Babylon. This happens over a 19-year period. The first one happens in 605 BC, and this is when a young Daniel is taken to Babylon. The second seize is when Ezekiel and his wife were among the 10,000 Jews taken captive to Babylon in 597. Ezekiel would have been 25 years old when he was exiled to Babylon. Now, he did not start his ministry until age 30, which was 11 years after Daniel. The third and final seize occurs in 586. It's described in 2 Kings 25, on the seventh day of the fifth month in the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. 2 Kings 25 also reveals more details. The Babylonians took away the pots, the shovels, the dishes, all the bronze articles used in temple service. Everything or anything that was made of pure gold or silver, they took. Now, with the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, it's important to, to recognize that the Babylonians took all the temple articles, all the silver, all the gold from the temple. Now, it's obvious that in victory, Babylon took captive the Jewish people and carried them off to Babylon. But the taking of the articles used for temple worship? Well, this posed an important question. Was the God of Israel defeated? You see, in ancient times when a nation was defeated, their gods were defeated as well. Their God also went into captivity. But here's the problem. Here's the problem the Babylonians faced. Unlike pagan nations, there was no idol of God in the Jewish temple to take and to conquer. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob could not be captured and defeated. The next best thing was to take all the vessels used for worship. But as time will show, that decision will eventually lead to Babylon's downfall. You know, that's enough for this week. I'll be back next week with some more nuggets and some more insights from the book of Daniel. Until then, let's all just look up and say, Maranatha, Lord Jesus. Uh -huh.